A question for you. Do you or someone you love have a health issue you've struggled with for much of your life? Well, you can probably relate to the story we're about to show you then. This valley man's had health problems since he was born. Trouble with things many of us take for granted, like wearing shoes, believe it or not. Still, Gordon McGuire keeps on moving. Take a look at his remarkable story. At first glance, looking at old family photographs and video, Gordon McGuire grew up a normal, active kid. But if you look closer at his feet, you'll see the rest of the story. The doctors did not know when he was born. They said, we don't know what caused it. We don't know what it is. It's just maybe a form of gigantism. Maybe you should just cut his feet off. And we said, yeah. no. There were a lot of doctors that, that as soon as they would see me, they'd get all excited because they thought that I was something they could name something after, you know, like Dr. Jones. All of a sudden, he's got Jones syndrome or something. Or... At the age of three, Gordon became a medical case study. His family was told that he suffered from Proteus. Some people call that elephant man syndrome. And Clapel Trinani, which manifested itself in Gordon in his massive feet. I'm one of the lucky ones. There, there are Clipple Trinani people that it affects their internal organ. And... As a toddler, a huge melon-sized tumor on the side of his chest had to be removed. Mine was so extreme at the beginning that um, they had thought during that initial eight-hour surgery removing this huge tumor, a football-sized tumor off the side of my chest, that um, that that pretty much was what would kill most people. His recovery was considered a medical miracle. But then more problems came as his feet began to grow enormous and misshapen. You know, our biggest problem was trying to find shoes for him. We had a little Italian shoemaker in Denver that was wonderful. And then he died. Throughout the years into his adulthood, Gordon would wear whatever footwear was available or whatever he created himself. And more and more, he grew accustomed to the stares and prying questions from kids and adults. He has memories of kids calling him a freak and a monster. I had figured out at a young age that when I was really rebellious against the fact that, that kids were going to tease me and, and call me names, and I would, I'd go over and beat them up and throw them in the bushes and do all that. Well, after a while, I figured out that I would, I would much rather have the body I have than to think like they were thinking, to be that cruel, to be that, to be that way. I would, I would rather have the body I have. With shoes like these, the nine-pound ones he calls his Franken-boots, it's no wonder everyone was asking questions. Then, last year, after an article was written in New Times, the show Ripley's Believe It or Not did a story on Gordon and found him custom shoemakers in Eagle, Colorado. They were, they were designed on the computer. The computer took all the measurements of my foot. They did just beautiful, beautiful insole work. And they are the finest fitting shoes I've ever owned in my life. And With his shoe issues taken care of, Gordon McGuire is ready to take his next step. Yet another round of surgical procedures. So now the surgery is going to shorten the length of my foot, condense it down. I might not have to have such quality custom shoes anymore. But I may actually be able to, to buy shoes that fit my left foot and and be able to work inserts into the right foot and wear the same size shoes for the first time in my life. Gordon's mother, who's taken care of her son and empowered him all his life, hopes Gordon is on the road to leading as normal a life as possible. It's what she's prayed for since the day he was born. I think he'll be just, I think he'll end up a good family man and he'll contribute a lot to help people like himself. That's his that's, dream, is to have a foundation to help dream. people and bring up the awareness. Well, Gordon had his surgery, and Gordon McGuire joins us now to tell us how it all went. You shortened the length of your foot, right? By about, by about three inches or so, yeah. And you're recovering? Is uh, it almost, almost recovered? Almost fully recovered. The, the swelling's to the point that it's, it's easily controllable, and, and I'm ready to be fitted for a new pair of shoes. Now, you know, this is a huge deal, the whole shoe issue. When oh, you're yeah. trying to jerry-rig your own shoes, and this is a pair that you kind of made yourself. Yeah, yeah. If you call, I mean, if you can even, they'll show your feet in just a second. You just kind of did your own thing. When you found out about that company in Eagle, Colorado, that's a life-changing experience. Oh, absolutely. It? For people like me that, mm -hmm. with, um, with my feet as huge as they were, um, there's just, it's, it's just 
it's no just way. incredible. Yeah, it's just incredible trying to find shoes, and and so many people will offer help about. Oh, there's an extra wide place down here. There's an extra, you know. I feel like that doesn't so, do anything yeah, for me. But the thing. internet has been an amazing help in this, and it's going to be a help for so many people out there, and with a lot of unusual medical conditions. Mm -hmm. Now you're able to share what you've learned with all of these other people, and the correct di diagnosis for you again is what? Um, Klippel-Trenani, which Klippel-Trenani syndrome and Proteus syndrome are are so often confused. Um, I've I've talked with other Klippel-Trenani or Proteus people. And they tell me instances of doctors arguing in front of them over which they have. Yeah, you know, they it, just don't really and to know. Us, it, it, well, there's there's no precise test to really say whether or not it's clipotronati. The the way that it's diagnosed in America is different than the way it's diagnosed in Europe for Proteus. Well, you know, Gordon, before we run out of time, mm -hmm. I just think the most amazing thing about your story is just how how funny you are, how <laughs> healthy you are, your girlfriends and the stories of all your loves. <laughs> You know, you've not let this stop you in any way. And I think your mom gets a lot of credit for oh, that, absolutely. don't you think? Absolutely. But you're a really chipper guy. Well, thank you. <laughs> and I think that's an inspiration for a lot of people who might let a disability yeah. or some kind of deformity hold them back. Yeah, yeah. Um, What's the secret? I don't know. Just just never give up. Just keep going, you know. I've, I've always considered myself lucky. And since I've met a whole lot of other Klippel-Trenani people and Proteus people, I still consider myself very lucky. So it's cool. Your mom has a website, or you have a website? I have a website, um, um, handicap.com, H-A-N-D-Y-C-A-P-P-E-D.com, and um, from there you can go to other websites that that um, have Klippel-Trenani stuff and have Proteus stuff. And yeah. Um, and just to get insight into this guy, he's he's a hoot. Yeah. And I, yeah. I do think you're inspirational. And hopefully we can start raising funds and 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 um, find even how to how to connect everybody a little better and okay. do stuff like well, that. Well, Gordon McGuire, so. congratulations. Thank Hope you. the surgery works. I can't wait to hear about the new shoes you're going to get in a little yeah. while. And stay with us, folks. If you are struggling in your marriage, maybe you just feel absolutely dis.